Hello, this is Pastor Hughes. I'm delighted to be with you this, this evening with another wild word. Just giving a shout out to JSBC and friends and partners. So grateful that you decided to, to tune in this evening. Have an, an exciting word. Um, God still speaks. Uh, I just find it so comforting to know that God loves us enough to have a plan for us and uh, a plan that's uh, better than any plan that we could come up with. Uh, he designed it even before we were born. Nothing about our lives uh, is an accident. Uh, God's plan is the best possible plan that could, could ever be. Uh, it's not always easy, uh, is, and we have to work at a few things to, to discover what that plan is. But that's, uh, that's, that's life. Uh, sometimes we have to climb a few mountains, walk through a few valleys, or dark places, uh, to, to, and always following his instructions to discover the reward of living according to God's will. That's why it's so important to, to, to know his voice, to be able to hear his voice and to be able to listen to God. So I really want to uh, talk to this, this, uh, this evening about the benefits of, of hearing God's voice and listening to God along the way because we are on a journey. Uh, God has various ways of getting our attention. I want to share some, some points with you that I believe will bless you. Uh, one, um, um, since God has a plan for you, we can be certain that he wants to guide you in, into that plan and, and, and for you to discover that purpose. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses five through six, you've heard me share that many times. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. To acknowledge the Lord means that we consider what he says and recognize his great power and trust his guidance. It also means that we follow his instructions, that we are mindful and, and sensitive to the things of God. You see, he continually seeks to guide us, but there are times when we don't listen. We miss it. We miss the mark. I'm grateful that his mercies are new every morning. Sometimes when we miss it, we end up going the wrong way. But when Jesus speaks, he wants us to listen. Uh, there's a passage of scripture uh, in uh, Mark's gospel, the fourth chapter, verses one through three, uh, where he was teaching a large crowd. And Jesus called for their attention by saying, listen to me, listen to this. And he wants us to listen this, this evening as well. There are people who are saying, you know, with What's going on in our uh, world today, God is speaking. And many are trying to foretell what God is saying, but we need to be accurate. We need to uh, be biblically sound, word-based always. Uh, if it's not in the word, you need, to, you need to overlook it and keep going. Find out what he's saying by getting in the word. And stay in the word. That's your anchor. That's your foundation. In Mark's gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 23 through 24, uh, Christ also announced, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And then he added a caution to that by saying, Take care. 
what you listen to. See, it's not only important to hear, but it's crucial to be discerning in our listening. Then there's another passage of scripture that I want to share with you, and it's found in Mark's gospel, the seventh chapter, verse 14. And when Jesus called out, he said, listen to me, all of you, and understand. So when we listen, we must also uh, at, uh, uh, comprehend what, what we are hearing. His goal is that we comprehend and, and, and understand what is being said, said during these times. And then in the gospel, according to St. John, the third chapter, verse 3, when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now this phrase, truly, truly, I say to you, is used about 25 times by Christ in the book of John. It was his way of emphasizing that what he was saying was authoritative truth and deserved one's full attention. Now, how does God speak to us today? How does God speak to us today? We need to be clear about that. We need to know that the Lord, how the Lord spoke to people in the Bible, but he also wants to speak to us personally, to, uh, to each of his children, just like a father speaks to his, his child father or mother speaks to their, their children. This means that we must be attentive because no one else can listen for us. This is something you must do for yourself. Now, the Bible is not just some book or some novel. It's the inerrant, authoritative word of God and it's the only source of truth. So God's primary way of speaking to us is, is through his word. So you can always get a word by reading the word. So when we read it, we're hearing directly from the Lord. Now there are other methods of listening to God. And they must be checked and compared with the scriptures to determine if they are accurate, if we are accurately hearing from him. He also speaks through prayer, and we know that prayer is our way of communicating with God by talking to him. The time to be still and listen for guidance. Instead of just simply running off and doing our own thing and uh, Not taking time to to wait on God, we can certainly miss miss Him, and you don't want to miss Him in these times. If He has anything to say or has placed on your heart, you need to adhere to it. The Lord may speak through our circumstances as well. Many times, the Lord has allowed me to go through certain things circumstances that some I, I wish I had been able to go around, but uh, through it all, uh, I was able to say that he was leading me and guiding me, securing me and protecting me, watching over me, and I was able to praise him as a result. A situation sometimes can be painful, but we must remember that hearing from God is more important than our comfort. We are so uh, prone to being creatures of comfort that we want everything to be comfortable, but there are some circumstances that we face 
they're not comfortable. But through it all, God is with us. In fact, there's a passage in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 5 through 6. This is a message Bible. You all know I like the message Bible. It says, since God assured us, he said, I'll never let you down. I'll never walk off and leave you. So we can boldly quote, God is there, ready to help. I'm fearless no matter what, who, or what can get to me. I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. That's, that's a good foundation to, to stand on. I want to share some examples from, from the Word of God also that I think will help increase uh, your awareness and sensitivity to, to the voice of God. Uh, Let's, let's deal with Moses, seeing how the Lord interacted with Moses. You know, but first of all, I want to say, sometimes our comprehension is, is hindered when we're reading the Word, because we read quickly, we just want to check it off, done your reading for the day, and you're not reading to hear from God, you're just reading to... to uh, to say that you you met your quota, you 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 you've done your reading, you put your time in. No, you should read, seeking, and desiring, for the Lord to speak to you by the aid of the Holy Spirit. We assume that sometimes when we read a passage of Scripture, because we read it before, we already know uh, all about it. And it, there's nothing else to learn in that passage. But if we read the word seeking to know what God is saying and how he would have us to apply it, Scripture becomes relevant. It becomes meaningful. It becomes rich, potent. And that brings me to their attention of Moses, how God interacted with Moses. Uh, in Exodus, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4, and I, I'll just, uh, I won't read all of it, I'll just say, uh, God called to him from the midst of the bush. Now, perhaps Moses had seen this bush before, but something unique and unusual was taking place that day. Moses was Tending to his father-in-law's uh, uh, flock, Jethro. And he noticed a burning bush. And he was surprised that the bush was not consumed. And, and then something else happened. <laughs> what would you do if you encountered a talking bush? <laughs> Moses heard a voice coming from the bush. God called him. It was a surprise. Many times, there are times when the Lord speaks to us as a surprise. Um, in similar ways, God deals with us. You and I may be surprised when God speaks unexpectedly and applies something in a passage of Scripture to our lives, our hearts. Something you weren't looking for. Something that you needed, but you weren't looking for it. His spirit opens our eyes. And we're able to see what he wants us to see. To understand and to hear. And we know he's speaking to us. It, it, it surprises us. But we are blessed. And then uh, uh, another benefit when 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 we hear from God is uh, he's when he's getting our attention. It's personal. It's personal. You know, it's for you. 
And that's why sometimes what you receive is for you. You shouldn't run off trying to put that on somebody else when it's for you. You just spend time and let it simmer and, 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 and get all that's there for you. God gave Moses a personal message. He says, verse 10, Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Purpose. Purpose. Commission. We ought to read the Bible with the awareness that the Lord is speaking personally to us through his word. It's always timely and relevant. You see, when you get a now word, a word that you need in this season. And we do need a word in this season for our household, for our family. We need a now word for our city, our cities, our nation. A specific word, verse 10, a specific word, God gave instruction to Moses. It was not general. It was very specific. Gave him a mission. Mission came through that instruction. What he was to accomplish. To bring God's people out of Egypt. Now can you see that today? So many are stuck in the world. They think like the world. They act like the world. Unfortunately, some of you smell like the world. It's time to get a word where we come out and come into, get back to the mission, get back to the things of God. Get back to the house of God. Then, when God spoke, it was encouragement also. And no one can encourage you like God can. The Lord encouraged Moses by saying, I will send you to Pharaoh. I will send you to Pharaoh. Oh, that's in verse 10. This was God's plan. It's not Moses' plan. It's God's plan. And many times it's not your plan. It's God's plan. Scripture is filled with encouragement for challenging times such as these. Times of sickness. Times of difficulty. Times of pain. Times of sorrow. If we will listen. You must listen but you must also believe and you must trust the Lord. You must trust him today. You must trust him. You must trust him. And there's is a serious, it's serious when God speaks. It's serious. It's serious. Unfortunately, there were times when the Lord spoke to me. I didn't take it as serious as I, as I should have, and I paid for it dearly. Even caused hardship my family. Thank God my children were, were small. They were young. They didn't. That's just the grace of God. They didn't know what we were going through. But my little wife did. God was so gracious through her. And how and he was so tender and, 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 and gentle. But he did correct me. And I thank God for it. But he did it with love. He did it with love. Not harshness. He did it with love. And that's God. It's serious. 
It's serious. The Lord wants us to give him our full attention. And he got my attention. In fact, he got my full attention. <laughs> he wants our full attention. And he wants us to understand and comprehend what he's saying today. But we have to cooperate with the process. And be confident that he will guide us through. We'll get through this. We'll get through this. We'll get through this. We got through 9-11, and we'll get through this. We'll get through this. But we must look to God to guide us. We must look to God to guide us. You see, it's not about who you are. It's about who he is. And God makes that very clear. Because sometimes we look at ourselves and we, 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 we find ourselves inadequate for the task. Like Moses, after hearing the Lord's command, Moses objected. I've been there where the Lord gave me an assignment and, and, I, and I just said, I can't do that. But I learned to, to agree with God because I discovered with God all things are possible if you believe. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about who is sending you. Come on, say amen. Come on, agree with me. Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. Who am I? Immediately, Moses is looking at himself. Because all Moses could see was obstacles to obeying him. God expects us to obey him, even if we feel inadequate. Where he leads I've discovered over the years where he leads, he provides. Sometimes we 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 think we we, we think we're qualified, but God qualifies those whom he called. And then uh, the Bible tells us uh Despite Moses' objection, <laughs> it did not change God's plan one bit. You may be in a similar place today. You just can't see yourself doing what God is asking you to do, what you feel prompted to do by leading, or either through circumstance or through, through the word of God. You just can't see yourself doing it. But on God's mind, God's plan will remain the same. God knows the plans that he has for you, plans to prosper you. You may be thinking about, if I do this, I'm going to fail. No, I'm here to tell you, if you do what he tells you to do, there's no way for you to fail. You're going to succeed because God is going to empower you. You're looking at your strength. You're looking at your deficiency. But you need to look above and beyond your strength and rely on his strength. We may think of all sorts of reasons why we can't do what God says or what he commands. But it is indisputable and inescapable. You've got to go with God. And it can be frightening. It can be frightening. When the Lord, through circumstances and through prompting, I knew when I was a little boy that I would preach. I never wanted to pastor. 
But I can't, I can't begin to tell you how happy I am pastoring and loving people. I, I didn't know, realize that I, I, I would be so happy and so pleased to, to obey God. But since, since, now, you may have a situation, the Lord asking you to return to some things. Like Moses had left Egypt, he left it as a, as a fugitive. He's coming back as a deliverer. He tried to do uh, it on his own, took matters into his own hand, failed miserably. Now the Lord is sending him back. Perhaps he has some fears. But the Lord assured him by revealing his name. He says, I am who I am. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the sovereign God of the universe who controls all things. Sometimes the thought of obeying God can fill us with fear, doubt, uncertainty. But we have the same assurance that Moses had. When Moses realized that the one who calls us is the great I am. And that's what I'm asking you to do this evening. To realize the one who is calling you is the great I am. When you realize that, when you accept that, it comes your fears. And it gives you courage to obey him. Then, when you hear the voice of God, it comes with a promise. The Lord gave Moses, when you hear the voice and you accept the voice of God, it comes with promise and it comes with presence. Oh, my God. The Lord also gave Moses this promise saying, hmm, Oh, I'm getting excited here. <laughs> oh, my God. Verse 12. Certainly I will be with you. Do you know God is with you this evening? You said, Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. Do you know God is with you? And this shall be the sign to you. That it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Verse 12. The Lord promises his assistance. Don't tell me that you don't need his assistance this evening. I need it. You need it. That's what's keeping me. His presence, his power, his provision to all who obey. So we never have to go empty handed to the task. Then when you hear his voice, and listen to God, you get his assurance. In God, we find instruction in hearing his word, either through reading the word, through circumstances, however God is speaking to you today, you listen. Regarding what to do, where to go, you have insight into his identity Assurance of his presence with us. There are times when we may feel like we've been abandoned. We've been forsaken because of our circumstances. I've been there. I've been in a place where I felt like God wasn't even hearing my prayers just to discover 
that it was not God, it was I who took the wrong turn, got off track, doing my thing when God was calling me to do his thing. And he, through events and circumstances, gently steered me back in the right direction. And when I came back in alignment with his will, it was as if the sky opened. And I saw his hand moving on my behalf. I... Oh my God, repented. I'm, when I talk about repentance, I'm talking about I changed my mind. I changed my mind. And I changed my thoughts. Adjusted my behavior. And I decided that God's way is better than my way. Assurance. The Lord will not fail or forsake us. He didn't fail me, and he will not fail you. He didn't forsake me, and he will not forsake you. God gave Moses the following assurance. In Exodus, the third chapter, verses 19 through 20, he said, but I know that the king of Egypt will not permit you to go except on the compulsion so I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles, which I shall do in the midst of it. And after that, he will let you go. I'm here to tell you the things that have hindered you will have to let you go. They can't hold you any longer because God is fighting. I said God is fighting on your behalf. He's with you. He has never abandoned you. Now I don't know who I'm talking to but there's someone there. You, you, you're wringing your hands thinking and, 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 and as if God has abandoned you. You've almost given up. But don't you give up. You hold on. They used to say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. God has not forsaken you. But give him your undivided attention. You know, we, we live in such a great society. And there are so many things that vie for our attention. TV and other things, pleasure and amusement our own plans, but give God your full attention. God wants to show off on your behalf. If it's a miracle you need, a miracle he will provide. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that I know and you can know. Listen, beloved, there are some requirements. There are some requirements. Because sometimes we don't know where we are. We don't know where we're standing. And God has a way of locating us. God can locate you. And I'm asking him right now to locate you. And why don't you ask the Lord, Lord, locate me. Locate me. There are requirements. Let me just share this with you. Uh, verse, verse 5. He said, do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet. For the place on which you're standing is holy ground. Moses didn't know that. Don't you treat what God is doing in your life as common? Because it's not. Moses was to treat the Lord as holy and so are we. To others, what God requires of us may seem foolish, crazy, 
But this is how we learn obedience. One step at a time. One step at a time. It's not hard to remove your shoes. Moses removed his shoes. But I'm telling you, going back to Egypt is harder. But God gave him clear instruction, and he will be clear with you. God doesn't speak in generalities. He clearly told Moses that he was sending him to Egypt to rescue his people. Lord, me send you to speak to a neighbor, speak to a family member. Don't be afraid to obey God. You let God, you obey and you let God do the rest. Let him work the miracle. You, you're not the miracle worker, he is. Circumstances, when God speaks through circumstances, the Lord often works through our circumstances in order to teach us to trust him. That's exactly what he did for me. I learned to trust God through circumstances. The situation Moses was facing required great trust in God. And what God has called me to do, I'm telling you, beloved, there is no way that I would still be pastoring going on 37 years in one setting if I didn't trust God. If I had not obeyed and trust God, trusted God. And I'm telling you, obedience is certainly better than sacrifice. The situation Moses was facing required great trust. What you're facing today requires great trust in God. I'm talking about trusting God to provide and intervene on your behalf. Granting and giving you favor. You don't need favor with everyone, but you need favor with the right people. Giving you favor in the right places. Giving you recognition in the right place. You don't need everybody to recognize you, but the right people. Because not everybody is intent. Their intent is to help. Some, in fact, may be to hinder, but God will steer you in the right direction. But you got to trust Him. You got to trust Him. You got to trust Him with, you, you got to be expecting Him to move. On your behalf. He's still the great I am. Hmm. He's still the great I am. Today we have the Holy Spirit of course. Dwelling within us. To empower. Us. To empower our obedience. To do whatever God says to do. And then. When. We're listening. And hearing God's voice, it comes with a goal also. For Moses, the goal was clear. Set God's people free. The Lord never calls us to do anything for which he does not have reason, purpose, or goal. You got to keep the main thing the main thing. Stay married to the mission and court the method. But don't be afraid to adapt and to adjust to new methods. But keep the main thing the main thing. Stay with the mission. Stay with the mission. Stay with the mission. And when he re doesn't reveal to us what it is, we must still trust him. We must trust him. We must trust him amidst the fears, 
amidst the doubts, the worry, and the anxiety, we must trust him. And then when God speaks to us, I say he still speaks, it will be unforgettable. When the Lord spoke to me, when I had missed the turn and the direction that he was sending me, he reminded me, he said, you remember when? What I instructed you to do? I'm not going to get into that because it would just take too long. That's a story within itself. That's perhaps a whole book. And I said, oh, oh. humbled myself before him and I got back in alignment and immediately he began to move and sunshine came in. Moses when Moses was in Egypt he was running for his life. He took courage to return he needed to remember that the Lord was the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the great I am, who said, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial name to all generations. He's the same. Don't forget it. Then, finally reassuring To further reassure Moses, the Lord promised. He promised that when the people left Egypt, they would not leave empty-handed. He would grant them favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So he would grant them the kind of favor, the kind of favor that they would freely give to them whatever they needed. God has someone already ready with the provision that you need. Already. He has already purpose. Now you just need to trust him. It's throughout God's conversation with Moses, he promised his presence his wisdom, his provision, his power. He has not changed. We have the same thing. God has not changed. He is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. You may not be able to count on everything, but you can certainly count on God. And with that note, I am asking God to, to bless. Uh, we're coming up on Mother's Day. I'm asking God to bless the mothers throughout this land. Bless them with peace strength, and courage. Give them wisdom, Lord God. Give them strength to carry on, to make provision for them in their households. Let their homes be a place of soulless peace. Let them be a comfort to their spouse, a joy to their children, Give them all that they stand in need of. Let them know that you have called them for this time, such a time as this. Walk with them and help them to comfort their children that there will be no fear. Speak to them, Lord God. Even if it's in the wee hours of the morning, speak to them. Let them know 
And because you're with them, they can they, they, they can make it. Tomorrow is bright and the best is yet to come. What you have done for others, reassure them that you will do for them because you are no respecter of person. And now if you have never received Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to make the full payment for your sin, and you're ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, invite him in. Then the God of all creation who has pledged his unfailing and undying love to you, his child, will pour out your heart, pour out your heart to him. He will answer you right now and crown your life with his blessing and favor. I'm asking you to take a step of faith and to trust him. Invite him in to be your Lord and your Savior. And have him crown your efforts with success. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And give you reigning and sustaining peace. May you go in peace, and the peace of God go with you. Be endowed and do it with power for the task that lies ahead. Remember, God is with you, and you can't fail with the God that you serve. He has made you to be all that you can be in and through him. We love you. We are praying on your behalf. You continue to send a prayer this way as well. Go in peace.